VS Code has some great remote development extensions that allow you to essentially dial the VS Code interface into some external server. So everything you're going to be doing in VS Code is going to be occurring on that server. In this guide, I'm going to show you how to set this up via a SSH connection. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to extensions and search for remote SSH. Should be the first option. The author of this extension is Microsoft. Go ahead and install this extension. And once you do, on the bottom left of the screen, you should see the remote connection icon. If you click that, a series of options will pop up. Choose the first one, connect to host, and then choose configure SSH hosts. And then the first option on this list should be your computer's SSH config file, so open that. And this file may or may not be empty. It just depends on if you've used it in the past. Uh, regardless of what you see in there, just at the end of the file, we want to add some configs that's going to store the information of the server we're connecting to. To help with this, I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video and scroll down and grab the configs from there. So we're looking for this code block. I'm going to add that to my config file. And then for the host value, I'm going to update this to some alias I want to represent this server. So I'll just call it demo. And then I'm going to change the host name to the IP address of the server I'm connecting to. And then finally, you want to update the username you want to connect as. Uh, in this example, I am just going to connect as the root user, so I'll leave that as is. With my config set up, I'm going to save my changes to this file and then go back to the remote connection icon. I'm going to choose connect to host, and I should see the alias for the server information I just added. So I'm going to click that. A new VS Code window is going to open and it's going to set up a connection with that server. Uh, in my case, I have SSH key set up with that server, so it just automatically connects. If you typically connect to your server with a password, it'll prompt you for your password to proceed with the connection. Now, once you're connected, everything you're going to be doing in this window is going to be happening on that remote server. For example, I've got the terminal open. I see uh, the prompt for my remote server. Let's just move to our home directory. I'm going to make a test directory, and then I could go ahead and open up that test directory directly here in VS Code. You can see the window refreshes, and it should open it up in my folder explorer. So there's the test directory. I can create a new file in here. I can, of course, edit the file. Basically, all the things you would typically do in VS Code, you can continue to do that, just understanding that everything you're doing is happening on that remote server. So that's the basics of setting up your connection. Now, a couple closing tips. Uh, the first is if you go over to your extensions while you're connected to the server, you'll notice that some of the extensions are going to be grayed out. Uh, the reason for that is, is depending on how the extension is set up, some of them will automatically be set up on your server for you. Others, you have to manually prompt to install them on the server. Uh, so for example, let me find my color theme that I typically use in VS Code. It's this one right here. Um, I'm going to manually install that in SSH so it'll set it up on the server. All right, and once that's done, I should see my interface update. And there you go. Now you can see the color theme of this window matches the uh, color theme we were seeing when I was working in the local instance of VS Code. All right, so keep that in mind. If you're missing some extensions, you do need to manually install some of them. And related to that, I would only recommend installing the extensions that you actually plan on needing on that server, just because the remote development process can be resource intensive. And the more extensions you have installed and working on the server, the more so uh, resources it's going to require. So only install what you actually need to use. The final tip I want to leave you with is if you're doing remote development on a budget-friendly server, in other words, a server with a low amount of RAM, you might run into some connection issues and some lagginess when using this remote development plugin. Uh, specifically, an issue I frequently see is my connection will stall out and I'll get stuck in this loop where I'm seeing it uh, continually trying to reconnect. If that happens to you, check the video description. I have a separate video that talks about why that's happening and how you can fix it so that you can continue with the remote development process.